Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love. Praise the Lord, friends. My name is John Nathan Owara. I am married to Faith Irene. And I want to welcome you to this segment of Embrace. Today, we are talking marriage. I have been married for a few years, and I can confidently speak about marriage. I may not be as experienced as other people are, but one thing I know is that I can confidently speak about marriage. Before we talk about marriage, let's pray, because marriage is an institution instituted by God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to talk about marriage. Speak through us. Help us to learn. In Jesus' name. Amen. First of all, I want to thank our friends, Good News Productions International, who have always given us an opportunity to share these words with you. Marriage. I am going to use the abbreviation marriage, M A W R I A G and E. What is marriage? Many people have tried to explain in their different views what marriage is. I will also take the same opportunity to share what I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to share about marriage in simplicity. So if you're there and you hope to enter marriage, if you're there and you are in, you're married, it doesn't matter how many years, as long as you are either in marriage or interested in getting married, this is for you. So we'll start with M. What is marriage? Marriage is ministry. And many times when we talk about ministry, people don't understand. People think ministry is only when I'm on the pulpit preaching. They think ministry is only when I am playing guitar, or I'm singing, or I'm preaching. They have reduced ministry to pulpit or to the four walls of the church. Ministry is service. Ministry is serving God. Whichever area God has put you, you serve there. For example, if you're a driver, that is ministry. If you are a teacher, that is ministry. If you're a receptionist at a workplace, that is ministry. If you're a preacher, that is also ministry. So wherever God has put you, that is ministry. So just like the other ministries I've mentioned, where you serve God, marriage is also ministry. Marriage is also a place where we serve God. First, in marriage, we serve God. Second, we serve our households. That means people we stay with, our children, and all those we're in a, in, under the roof of where we stay. The third set is the church. You do not first serve the church, then you come. No, no, it's, the order is clear. You first serve God, then you serve your family or the household, then you extend it to the church. The outer church is an extension of what has happened between you and God and between you and your family members. You cannot pretend to be a very good person outside and within the walls of your house, you are crazy and you're mad and you are angry and bitter. It's dangerous for us. Therefore, marriage is ministry. Marriage, because it's ministry, it needs maturity. We have very immature people in ministry today. We have people whose anger, they get very angry. They get easily angry. We, get, we have people who preach the word of God, they get so angry. We also have people in marriages that they cannot, they're not mature enough. Let me tell you something, knowing how to cook, knowing how to clean, knowing how to wash, knowing how to sweep, is not the only yardstick for marriage. 
You can't say I am ready for marriage because you know how to cook. Cooking is good. Washing is good. But that is not the topmost yardstick for marriage. So even now, as we talk marriage, remember, marriage needs, marriage needs maturity. So M is for ministry. M is also for maturity. You don't just get anybody. And when I talk maturity, I'm not meaning age. Because there are people who are old, but they're not fit for marriage. People who are very old. They even, they even, they're too old, but they're having issues. Marriage is maturity. There are things you just, because of maturity, because you're mature, you ignore in marriage. There are things which are said and sometimes you just have to not ignore, you just have to keep calm. So marriage is ministry. And ministry needs patience. <laughs> ministry needs patience. For your ministry to grow, you need patience. Wherever you're doing ministry. So marriage is a ministry. A. After we finish M, we go to A. Marriage is acceptance. A is for acceptance. Acceptance comes out of love for that person. You accept them the way they, the, the way they are. If you love them, you accept them. If there is something wrong about somebody and you feel they shouldn't sit near you, you don't accept them. Marriage is acceptance. John chapter 15, verse 12 to 13 says this. Jesus is saying, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that a person will lay down his life for his friends. Marriage involves laying down your life for the other person. Marriage involves loving that person. When they come, you don't know the things they have come with. Some of them have a lot of pain. And all you need to do is love them. So the moment you accept to marry that person, you must love them. It's not an option. It's a commandment that Jesus gives us. So marriage involves accepting the person the way they are. Some of them have gone through a lot in life. Some of them have had sexual part, multiple sexual partners. And their story may not be good. But because you are marrying them, you need to accept them the way they are. If you're not ready to accept them, don't marry them. Don't, be, don't begin using their past against them when you're already married to them. Love them the way they are. If you're not ready for someone who is not perfect, then don't marry them. I know we've been told, you know, look for, date someone for six months, date them for three years, get to know them. Those are good things, but let me tell you, you will never know somebody 100%. You'll never know someone even 50%. So when you see somebody and you want to marry them, you must learn to love them and love them and accept them the way they are because acceptance comes out of love. And Jesus has commanded us. Are marriages for respect. Respect people. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. Jesus is saying, In everything therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you. For this is the law and the prophets. Man, respect people. When you're in marriage, respect people. Respect the parents of the, of the woman. Respect the parents of the man. Respect the children. Respect the neighbors. Respect people. You want to be respected. This is my house. This is my house. You have to respect me in my house. But have you respected them? Marriage is about respecting. About respecting people. Jesus is saying, treat people the same way you want them to treat you. That is respect. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with wealth. It has nothing to do with which family they come from. It has everything to do with the way you want to be treated is the same way you treat them. If you want your wife to treat you well, treat her well. You want your husband to treat you well, treat him well. That is respect. The other R, marriage is responsibility. Marriage is responsibility. If you are not willing to be responsible, they don't get married. Marriage is responsibility. As a married man, I know what I mean. <laughs> I have gone through a little bit. I understand. 
God gave roles to each, either a man and a woman. God gave different roles to men or women. Both of us have different roles. And let me say this, it is the role of the man to work and take care of his family, including his wife and his parents. So men, if you're not willing to do that, don't marry her. Don't get married. Leave her out. Stay single for as long as you should, until you're mature enough. Because responsibility is maturity. I want to marry, I think I want to marry a woman who works. Let me tell you as a man, the day you lose your job and she's working, you begin fighting. The day she begins earning more than you, you begin fighting. Because you can't provide for the family. Because your mindset earlier was that you want to marry a working class. Yet it is your responsibility as a man to take care of the family. And I'll read a scripture. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 27. It says this. Prepare your work outside and make it ready for yourself in the field. Afterward, then build your house. Men, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Proverbs 24, 7, 17. Proverbs chapter 27, 20, sorry. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 27 says, Prepare your work outside and make it ready for yourself in the field. Afterward, then <laughs> build your house. <laughs> Don't first, don't, you first prepare yourself that you're able to provide for her, provide for her relatives, provide for your children, then go build your house. Start somewhere. Don't just be, I want to marry. And you, you want to marry, but you're not ready to take responsibility of the children. You know, you're not ready to buy clothes. You're not ready to, eh? You also have sex, 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 but you don't want to take responsibility of how many children? You want to give some of your children to your relatives. That's wrong. Each of your relatives also have their own issues. Take responsibility for your marriage. Take responsibility for your relationship. Even without having money, you, the man, you are the vision bearer. Even without having money, I am the vision bearer of my marriage. I should give hope in that situation. I should give hope. When there's no food, I should give hope that there will be food. When there are no clothes, I should give hope that there will be clothes in the near future. When there's no tuition, as a man, I should give hope that there will be tuition. I should give hope to my wife and to my children. I am the vision bearer. Marriage is about responsibility. Women have their responsibility. Titus chapter 2, verse 3 to 5 says this. Older women, likewise, are to be, re are to be rev revered, that be respected in their behavior. Not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Older women are supposed to be good examples to the younger women. They are supposed to teach the younger women to respect their husbands. They're supposed to teach the younger women to work as well. So as the man is providing and giving his part of the bargain, women are supposed to be doing their parts as well. Marriage is responsibility. Women don't ask because they don't know what to do. But women ask because they are submitted to men. And women submit to men of vision. Women submit to men of purpose. Women submit to men who are responsible. My wife submits to me, not because I'm older than her, not because I have money, not because I have a car. My wife submits to me because I'm a responsible husband. Are you responsible as a husband? Marriage is reality. I'm still on R. Marriage is a reality. There are two R's there. I've done responsibility. And because of responsibility, you need to know that marriage is a real thing. It's not a fantasy. It's not something, it's not a picture. It is real work. You know pictures, they paint them and they put them there. Pictures don't move. 
but marriage is a reality i want to marry i want to marry a rich woman i want to marry a rich man i want to that is a fantasy you have to work towards it the reality is that you have to work towards it it's a reality marriage i i is for integrity integrity is doing the right thing even when no human being is seeing because you can't hide from god god is always watching what about your spouse is she there with you is he there with you wherever you are marriage is integrity if you're not willing to be a person of integrity don't marry let it be because when you live and you're not with her what do you do what are you doing where you are how do you spend when you are not with her or not with him marriage is integrity doing the right thing even when no one is watching a marriage is authentic authentic means its origin is not disputed its origin is not for 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 negotiation marriage is a original is an original thing it started in god and ends in god marriage is authentic it's not something to discuss its origin it started with god with adam and eve each marriage is an original copy it's original each marriage you can't copy what's in this marriage and bring it to yours no you can copy a few things but there are things you can't copy so walk your marriage husband and wife walk your marriage learn where you need to learn but remember that your marriage is an original it's not a photocopy of another marriage the moment your marriage is a photocopy of another of another marriage you're going to have fights in your marriage so husbands walk the journey with your wife into a marriage that is original copy marriage each marriage is unique each marriage starts in god who is the original creator of marriage a is marriage is authentic g marriage is a garden <laughs> marriage is a garden and those of you who are farmers understand this very well when you plant what you plant is what you harvest when you plant happiness you harvest happiness when you plant problems you'll harvest problems times 2 marriage is a garden how much you prepare the garden before planting is how much you harvest how much you prepare the garden when you're planting is how much you're preparing to harvest the amount of time you put preparing your marriage or your time for marriage is how much you're going to harvest now those of you already married invest time in your garden invest time in that marriage invest time if you don't till your garden if you don't do your garden work well then you should not expect a good harvest if you do your good work well you expect if you do your, if you if you do your gardening well you expect a good harvest and god is always with you because he's the author of marriage god loves marriage he is always in marriages especially marriages that have their foundation in jesus christ so how much you invest in your garden is how much you're going to get out if you put some little bit of manure of prayer put a bit of manure of love put a bit of manure of giving to your partner let me tell you you will have vest well that marriage is good but also when you are when you are taking care of your garden you weed weed weeding as you weed you protect you protect the what you've planted because weeds will grow and choke and choke what you have planted so you weed weeding means removing what is not in the, what's not supposed to be in the marriage remove the bad behavior even you surrender some of those things weed them out build a wall around your fence about around your garden if it's a maize garden you don't want animals to enter and eat and eat your maize then you have put a wall around put thorns to protect animals from entering as a husband as a wife you need to protect your marriage from other intruders people who come with gossip 
people come with all other negative things. They come to destroy your marriage. You are supposed to protect your marriage. Put a hedge of protection around your garden because marriage is your garden. And lastly, marriage is an ecosystem. And what's an ecosystem? The simplest definition of an ecosystem is a community or a group of living organisms that live and interact with each other in a specific environment. Marriage is an ecosystem. Marriage is a relationship. That's an ecosystem where organisms, where people relate. Relate well with your wife. Relate well with your children. Relate well with your parents-in-law. Relate well with your other people on their side. Relate well with people. Relate well. Marriage is an ecosystem. Relate well with neighbors. Relate well with friends. And those friends that are coming to as intruders, cut them out. Because even in an ecosystem, there are those things that die and fall out of the, of the, of the food chain. So weed out what is not supposed to be there and relate well with people. So marriage is a ministry, as I conclude. Marriage is a ministry. Marriage is acceptance, which comes out of love. Marriage is respect. Marriage is responsibility. Marriage is a reality, which comes out of responsibility. Marriage is integrity, is, has to have integrity in it. Marriage is authentic. Marriage is a garden where you plant and you prepare. And lastly, marriage is an ecosystem of relationships. Thank you so much. Till next time, God bless you. Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love.